Hey, good morning everybody, it's Mike, and thanks for jumping on here with me this morning. Hey, you know the single best piece of advice that I've ever received in this business was this. Hey Mike, watch what other people do and then go in the exact opposite direction. Watch what others do and then go the exact opposite direction. If for no other reason than just to be different. And you know, to this day, that's still the single best piece of advice I ever got. That is exactly right. It's something that I strongly encourage to you. Watch what everybody else does and don't do that. Go the opposite direction. You know, with 50,000 real estate agents in the metro Atlanta area, like isn't that crazy? What makes you different? What sets you apart? Why should I hire you? Uh, it could be big things. It could be. It could be little bitty things. And I think all, most of the time, it's the little bitty things that make the difference. It could be positive. It could be negative. Um, it could be things like from your professional picture, your headshot, so to speak, right? Like, oh my gosh, I look around this industry. It's just so bad. We're all doing the same thing. It looks so stiff, so contrived, so not you. And then I was at a real estate thing and I was listening to this young guy talk and he was from Destin, Florida. And he had his professional picture up on the screen behind him. And it was him standing out on a boat in the middle of the Gulf, I guess. And he was in cargo shorts and flip-flops and an old ratty t-shirt and a big smile on his face and he was holding up this big fish that he had caught. And so I talked to him after his little talk and I said, really? That's your professional picture? And he goes, Mike, that's why people move to Destin, Florida. That's what they imagine their life's going to be when they move from Michigan to Destin, Florida. So yeah, that's my professional picture. And I went, that's right. That's exactly right. You don't need to be in a suit and tie or have a glamour shots or this stiff, contrived, leaning back with your arms crossed. It's just so horrible. It's what everybody else does. This kid, he would had to figure it out. I thought, that's exactly right. It could be your things from your professional picture. It could just be how you dress every day. You know, one of the things, uh, and I did it because of this advice, that I noticed about this industry was a couple of things. Number one, consumers don't have very much respect for us. Yeah, they don't. By and large, they think we're a bunch of goofballs. And sometimes they're right. Uh, but sometimes it's just because, my next observation, we just dress really sloppily in this industry. Like we don't dress like professionals, we dress like bums. Shirts untucked, clothes that don't fit, old worn out shoes and belts. We don't look like sharp, snazzy professionals. We look like what they think we are. I'm like, okay, well, I can do different. So from that time till today, I wear a jacket and tie every day. Why? To look, mostly just to look different, right? And compared to how the rest of the industry dresses, it gives me credibility for no other reason than how I dress. So I'm gonna give you a real quick example. I walk into my golf club one afternoon and I had taken a change of clothes with me because you will never see me walk around this office in shorts. You will never see, you, if you come in on Friday, that's about as close to casual as you're ever gonna see me. Why? Because I have standards to maintain. Does it mean that I don't, I'm not casual in parts of my life? Look, I don't sit around my house at night with a jacket and tie on, right? But you'll never see it because I have standards to maintain and that makes me different. So anyhow, I'm walking through the clubhouse and there's a table full of guys sitting over there playing cards. And I've got my jacket and tie, I've got a suit on and one of them whistles at me. Yeah, like, yeah, I laughed. And they're like, wow, you look pretty. Where are you coming from, a funeral? And I'm like, no, it's just coming from work. And one of them says, but you're in real estate. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just the pretty face. And I, they laughed and I kept walking on. But see what they said? But you're in real estate. You people, you people don't dress nice. You people look like bums. You people are goofballs. 
but you're not. And then when I was walking on through, I thought, yeah, see, it works. So I just confused them in their mind. I didn't look like they thought I should look. I looked different. It could be how you dress. It could be your unique attributes. You know, over the last week, I've had a chance to have a conversation with three of our young male real estate agents. And they all three express the same concern. Stephen and Axel and Aldo, they all express the same concern. We're pretty young. We don't have a lot of experience. I don't have a great resume in real estate. I'm concerned that this is going to hurt me with opportunities. I'm like, well, it might. Or you could actually turn that to your advantage. And they're like, well, how do you mean? I'm like, well, what advantage? So I've got almost 40 years in this business and more than 10,000 sales. And why should you beat me at every opportunity? And they're like, we don't know. I'm like, well, I'm going to tell you. Because, because you are young. Because you, are, you do have more energy and time than I do. You do have more enthusiasm than I do. I'm a beat down old man. <laughs> uh, use that to your advantage. If you're talking to a seller and they want to know how many homes you've sold, say, well, that to tell you the truth, I'm pretty new and obviously I'm pretty young and that's why I'm the perfect agent for you. I mean, you could list your house with Mike and be one of dozens of listings with that tired old man or you could hire me and I've got energy and I've got passion and the chance to get your home sold would be career building for me. Be career building for me. I would wake up every day dreaming of getting your house sold. With Mike, you're just another listing. Like, take what you can do and use it to your advantage. Be different. Be you. Your marketing. So many times I hear people say, well, you know, I'm making the calls, but people don't answer the phone. I'm like, well, that's great. What do you mean it's great that they're not answering the phone? Hey, if they're not answering your calls, they're not answering anybody else's either. Now, there's your opportunity. So what could you do? And they're like, well, I don't know. What could I do? I'm like, that's what you have to figure out that the opportunity just presented itself to you. If they're not answering your call, they're not answering anybody's. Now, what else could you do? And don't practice intellectual laziness. Come up with something. I did. It was different. It worked. Did it work with everybody every time? Of course not. Nothing works with everybody every time. But it worked. And I got more than my share of business out of it. That's what you have to come up with. Your target audience. Your target audience could just be different than everybody else's. Hey, let me give you a couple examples right here in our building. How many gamers do you know that have built a successful real estate business off their video gaming? We'll take a look at Casey Sears. Do you know anybody else that's like Casey? How many people do you know that are like Steve Danino and that are focusing on lofts? Do you know any real estate agent anywhere that his target audience, his focus is on lofts? No. It makes Steve really unique, right? How about Atticus Graybill? How many people do you know that are focused on 1031 tax-free exchanges? How many people do you even know that know what the hell that is? But if you're an investor in real estate, that is an important concept and you need somebody to help you navigate that landscape. How about Jay Manning? There is nobody in the state of Georgia that knows more about Section 8 housing than Jay Manning, including the people that work at Section 8 housing who turn to her for advice and guidance. Hey, if you're an investor, and you want guaranteed rent every month, would Jay be a unique asset to you? Help you be able to guide you through that minefield of rules and regulations so that you could be successful in that space? Absolutely. These are just a few examples of people who took a target audience and made it really different and unique for them. It could be something like your work habits. Hey, take a look around the industry. 
just take a look around the industry and watch what everybody else does. Now I said it could be positive or it could be negative. Here's a negative one for you. Hey look, are you impressed by real estate agents work habits? Do they get up early? Do they get dressed? Do they go to work? Do they work hard all day in a focused, determined manner and sometimes late into the day? Every day rinse and repeat? No. No, they want to stay at home and work from their home office, which is a converted bedroom in their house. And they got all kinds of shit going on in the house, which are distracting because they're, they're lazy and they don't want to get up and they don't want to make the effort. And they, want, they do want to be successful in this business, but they don't want to put that much effort into it. And see, that's a negative view on it, right? Yeah, but how could you take that and be completely different? You know, I, one time I saw this ad and I stole this guy's concept. I was in Charleston, South Carolina, and I was going, having breakfast, looking, flipping through their newspaper, and I came across this real estate agent's ad on one page. And it was a young guy, and I was pretty young at the time myself, and he had his sleeves rolled up and his jacket over his shoulder, and he was looking back at the camera, and the caption said, the hardest working man in Charleston real estate. And instantly I went, that's it. That's who I am. That's who I'm going to present myself as, and that's who I'm going to actually be. I'm going to be the hardest working man in Atlanta real estate. And so I just ripped that off and took it, and it worked great. People, not everybody, but not everybody for everything, but a lot of people really liked that. They wanted a young, hardworking real estate agent. And because I presented and marketed myself that way and then tried to be, that was my identity. Folks, what's your identity? Watch what other people do or don't do and go the exact opposite direction. Be you. Be different. And set yourself apart. And if you were to do that, you'd be going out there and making it happen for yourself.